What's happening guys, FM Tech Stories back at it again with another setup video. Today we're going to be taking a look at some more insane teen setups since you guys seem to enjoy that a lot. Also, if you think your setup is worthy enough to be on the show, then consider participating. I've actually updated the requirements video for 2020 and I'll have that link down below for you guys to check out. But with that said, sit back and relax because it's time for Setup Wars. Now, before we continue any further, I do want to take a minute and thank ASUS powered by NVIDIA GeForce RTX for sponsoring this video. Did you guys know that most GPUs have manufactured parts of the graphics card that are built by hand, which introduces the possibility of human error? ASUS graphics cards are different from others on the market because their manufacturing process uses Auto Extreme technology, which is the industry's first fully automated production process. This means as a gamer, you get more reliability for your gaming system. And of course, with NVIDIA's RTX GPUs, you also get dedicated ray tracing cores and AI-powered DLSS 2.0 with games like Minecraft RTX. It's time to upgrade your system and gaming experience by going with an ASUS graphics card powered by NVIDIA GeForce RTX. To learn more, click the link below. Wow, what a way to start off the show. Take a look at Aryan's setup from Virginia. He's a high school student and this is the setup he uses for gaming and homework. We're not talking just one or two, but triple curved monitors that he mounted against the wall with a massive 65 inch 4K TV from Samsung right on the top. Personally, I feel like the TV is mounted a bit too high up there. There is a lot of empty space between the setup and the TV. The desk he's using is made up of the IKEA Saljon countertop and a few Alex drawers as support, but he did use a few capital legs to raise the desk a bit. For peripherals, Aryan chose Corsair. He's rocking the K95 RGB Platinum keyboard with the M65 Elite mouse without a mouse pad for some reason. I also don't prefer just leaving the cables alone like that, even if you did wrap it with a Velcro strap. What you can do is take apart the mouse cable and spread it out evenly under your keyboard to hide most of the wires for a much cleaner surface. I also noticed that your monitors are blocking off your speakers. If it starts to bother you in the future or if you plan on buying better speakers, you can always mount them on your wall right above your monitors since you have plenty of unused space. There's a bunch of these speaker mounts online for super cheap. You would just need to find the right ones that work with your speakers. Aside from the speakers, he also uses the SteelSeries Arctis 7 headset that he has hanging underneath the desk. Now cables do seem under control with the help of a few raceways and cable clips and it does look like he routed all of those cables through the wall and out the top behind his monitor where he then hooked up everything on a power strip. Nicely done. I also like that he hooked up stuff near the edge for convenience like a USB hub, a few charging cables and even his optical drive. I haven't seen one of these since I graduated first grade. Arian does also own an Xbox 360 Slim, but he mostly games on his custom PC that he built inside the Corsair Spec Omega. It's packing the i7 8700K in here with 32GB of RAM and the GTX 1080 Ti. For a 16 year old, this is one hell of a setup. Then again, his entire bedroom is bigger than my master bedroom, so I'm not surprised. Arian stated in the notes that he built this setup all by himself, and if that is true, I will commend you. Just work on personalizing your setup a bit so that it stands out more compared to the other quad display setups on the channel. Thank you for entering. Coming all the way from Dublin, Ireland, we have Bew and his super clean gaming setup. I honestly didn't know if I should have included this in the teen edition since he's technically not a teenager yet, being only 12, but I didn't have any plans on making a pre-teen edition anytime soon. I have way too many editions of Setup Wars as it is. We got Ultimate, Budget, Teen, Laptop, Minimalistic, Worst, Girl, Lego Edition is coming up soon, and even Console Edition once I get enough console submissions. Anyways, back to the setup. So Bio is rocking a single 34-inch ultra-wide monitor on top of the IKEA Mickey desk. He's also using the HyperX Alloy FPS keyboard with custom gold keycaps that he picked up from Amazon, along with the Razer Naga Trinity gaming mouse and also a blue Snowball Ice microphone. A lot of people might not realize this, but the IKEA Mickey desk is more like a side table. It's not meant to be used as a desk for obvious reasons. There aren't that many things on the desk and it's already starting to bow in the center, not to mention how small and narrow it is, barely leaving enough room for the keyboard and mouse. There is just enough extra room for the speakers and a couple of lava lamps. Unfortunately, Bio had to keep his PC on a separate shelf. 
You know, if the PC costs more than your actual setup, there needs to be some questions answered. What I do know is that it's custom made. You can clearly tell by all those nasty cables everywhere. That's surprising to see considering the cables from the actual setup are managed fairly well. I shouldn't be too hard on him anyways, since he's only 12. At this age, this setup is actually pretty good. Is that? Is that a Fortnite game launcher I see on your desktop? I was hoping I didn't have to do this. Coming at number 3 is Casper the Friendly Ghost from the Netherlands and his super cozy gaming setup. We have a couple of Alex Joris holding up his Lindman tabletop along with dual monitors. We got a 32 inch from AOC as the main display and a 24 inch on the side for multitasking. For peripherals, Casper is rocking the Corsair K68 keyboard and Glaive Pro RGB mouse with a collection of speakers. This dude really loves music. He has a pair of LG speakers that he kept on wall shelves up top, along with a giant JBL boombox in the middle. But it doesn't end there. There are two massive floor speakers sandwiching his setup, along with four more speakers under the monitors. We got the Logitech Z4s and two more from JBL. This guy must be parting it up every day. Speaking of parting it up, he even added another wall shelf on the top to display all of his empty whiskey bottles. I don't know if I should be more concerned that you're drinking at the age of 19 or if you think displaying empty whiskey bottles is a cool thing. Do your parents know that you're drinking alcohol at the age of 19 by the way? Oh, that's right, he's not from the US, I forgot. Wait, what's the drinking age in the Netherlands? Let's take a look real quick. 19? 19 years old? Don't you guys think that's a bit too young to start consuming alcohol? Actually, what am I even talking about? Kids in my home country, Armenia, start drinking at the age of 14, so that's actually not bad at all. Cable management also isn't that bad at all. He dumped all the wires on a Signum rack from Ikea and hooked up the power strip underneath the desk, no complaints. And finally, the PC powering it all is another custom build. Holy fans, Batman. It looks like a tsunami is about to start up in here. We got eight fans in here alongside the i5-9600KF and the MSI RTX 2070. I'm curious as to why you didn't replace those two AIO fans with RGB ones since everything else is pretty much RGB in there. I'm really liking the setup though. I think the red walls you have adds a nice contrast against the black accents in your setup and it even has a bit of personality from the whiskey bottles up top and your skateboard that you have hung on the wall. Not bad. Overall great job on everything. Thank you Casper for entering. Up next is Hudson from New York and his simple setup that he uses for gaming and schoolwork. He's using a single 24 inch gaming monitor as the main display and a 55 inch 4K TV up top as a secondary. For once, we don't have any Corsair peripherals. Hudson is using the Razer Black Widow Tournament Edition Chroma with a Logitech G403 Prodigy mouse, but with a Corsair mouse pad. For audio, he's got a soundbar underneath the LG TV for media consumption and the HyperX Cloud 2 headset for gaming. He also has a blue Snowball Ice microphone hooked up to a boom arm off to the side, but I would have mounted that in between your PC and monitor instead, that way it's not in the way as much. Also, your fan configuration in your PC isn't optimal. You have four intake fans. It's generally not a great idea of putting the top fans as intake since hot air rises, but other than that, it's looking like a clean build and good job on picking up custom cables too. Also, is there a reason why the setup isn't centered with your TV? I mean, overall, it's a pretty decent setup, but I feel like it's not complete. There's a lot of unused space, it's lacking personality, symmetry, and the cables could use some more work. You know, you can use some cable clips to keep the AC cable in a straight path instead of having it hang like that. It's definitely a great start, however, with room for improvement. Thank you, Hudson, for entering. Wrapping up the episode is Makaru Kito, who is a graphic designer from Indonesia, and take a look at this awesome custom setup that he built. Right off the bat, the presentation is just stunning. I'm getting that futuristic industrial vibe with all of that reflective glossy surfaces and lighting. This setup looks like something straight out of a portal map, and I'm loving everything about it. In terms of purpose, the setup is only used for design and consuming media. Unfortunately, Mech doesn't use it for gaming. He has a single 24-inch LG monitor as the main display that's sitting on top of a custom monitor riser and another 24-inch in vertical mode that he uses for multitasking and design. Both desks are also custom made and I love that he added some white carbon fiber vinyl on the legs and the edges of the main desk while the other side table has LED lighting incorporated on the sides and he somehow managed to diffuse the lighting by covering them with some type of frosted material. The same lighting is also done to the top wall shelf and he covered the cables using a white raceway. There's definitely a lot going on in this setup and if you look closely at all the pictures you can begin to appreciate all the little details. 
For peripherals, Mech is using a custom 40% split keyboard that he built using the lubed Tilio switches and DSA blank white and XDA ice cream keycaps. Such a cool custom tiny keyboard that fits so well with the setup's theme. He also uses the Logitech G102 mouse, which he has hanging from his pegboard when he's not using it. And it looks like he has a drawing tablet as well next to his keyboard, which he covers up with a mouse pad. That way he can use the mouse without having to move the tablet. That's quite genius, actually. You gotta appreciate his insane dedication to the color scheme. Everything from the setup is either white or black with subtle accent colors. For audio, we don't have any speakers. Instead, Mech uses the Corsair Void RGB gaming headset for output and the Fifine microphone for input. I love that he has dedicated storage for all of his gear to keep the setup clutter free. Cables are also managed perfectly with some raceways to help with routing and a power strip to plug everything in. And there's also a USB hub near the edge of the desk for convenience. And finally, the PC powering this awesome setup is tucked away in the corner and I couldn't have picked a better case to tie the setup together. Unfortunately, we don't have any pictures of inside, but it is a budget build equipped with an i5-8400 and the MSI GTX 1050 Ti. You can definitely tell that Mech is a great graphic designer because the entire setup reflects on his profession and skills. It is so unique and creative that it doesn't even look like a setup. It looks like something that belongs in a futuristic movie or video game. I mean, just look at what he did with the Google Home Mini. Not only did he hook it up against the wall, but he added some designs around it to make it stand out. And he even incorporated the RGB strip packaging in there. He definitely has a lot of creativity and he did a phenomenal job incorporating that in his setup. I'm pretty sure you guys are already expecting this, but Mech, congratulations on receiving the 29th seal of approval. Outstanding work, my friend. This is such a great example that building a setup can also be a work of art. I have no doubt in my mind that this setup will help inspire people to get out there and just be more creative. If you're watching this video, toss an email to setupwars, prizes at gmail.com to claim your one of a kind plaque. Once again, outstanding work. And on that note, make sure you guys vote on your favorite setups in the comment section down below and consider dropping a like if you enjoyed today's episode and subscribe for more Setup Wars every single Monday. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I love your beautiful nose holes and I will see you very soon in the next one.